welcome again to Knit for Brains. I have no idea what to call this channel anymore. Knitting and crocheting and I did a thing. And I'm, I am so obsessed, I'm excited about this, but I'm gonna give you a hint. It has nothing to do with crochet and it has nothing to do with uh, knitting, but it has everything to do with fiber. Um, I bought a loom. And I thought, nah, okay, you know what? Didn't really think much about them. Um, to be honest with you, I had, uh, there's a points system. So the more, with Lion Brand, the more things that you purchase, you get points. So I had these points that had built up, thanks to all of the surprise boxes and the Santa's boxes and the Santa sacks and all the stuff that I've been getting from Lion's Brand that you've been seeing, I had these points. And apparently, at some point, I had been looking on the Lions Brand website, and I had spied, with my little eye, a loom. And I thought, ooh, that looks kind of cool. So apparently, I put myself down on the waiting list, because it was out of stock. And I got an email saying it was back in stock, and I didn't really think about it. I just ordered it. I had done no comparison shopping. I didn't really know what I was getting into. I thought that was pretty cool. And that's not really like me because it wasn't a cheap purchase. It's $165 on Lion Brand. So it's an expensive, eh, we'll see kind of a thing. But apparently I, I was probably like, you know, sleep shopping. Have you ever done that before? <laughs> it was like two or three o'clock in the morning, like, ah, pfft. and next thing you know, something shows up on your doorstep. The Amazon guy knows me that well. Anyways, um, so I think that's kind of how it happened, but I had these points with Lion Brand, and so I ended up getting like $10 off, and I thought, well, it's a deal, because you know me, I'm all about the bargain. So I get this loom, right? And coincidentally, this will be another video, coincidentally, I get the loom in the mail, and I'm thinking, all right, this is kind of cool, so I'm going to dedicate a Saturday or whatever, just to figuring it out, putting it together, and so forth. Believe it or not, not two days later, I was at my mother's house and her neighbor, God bless her, has an old time knitting machine, right? And she says, hey, I understand that you'd like to do knitting and crocheting. Do you want it? Ha! Of course you want it, right? Because these things are expensive. Like they start at $500 and then they go up from there. So I got a knitting machine in another video because the Brit and I are gonna have to open it up, we're gonna have to clean it and put it together and see how it works. I'm interested to know if you've ever had one of these things, if you know how they work, but we'll get back to that. Anyways, getting back to this loom. So last Saturday, I dedicated the day to unpacking it and putting it together because it comes in pieces, right? And it's all wood. As it turns out, I really lucked out. Um, the Ashford Loom Company has been around for years, and it is one of the most reputable, best loom companies on the market. So I absolutely locked out. I got the Samplet Loom, so it's 25 centimeters, so it's about 10 inches across, and it's got the capability for a second loom. I didn't understand the word Samplet. I was so excited I ordered it, and then I got it. Very shortly after I started working with this, and I was so completely enamored, I was then very sad because I realized that I'm limited in what I can make with this. With the samplet, basically, so you know how you do gauges and swatches when you're making uh, a pattern, crochet, and or knit? Well, for all intent and purposes, the samplet loom is something for that. So let's say that you're gonna be trying a pretty intricate pattern, maybe you wanna try it on the samplet loom to get a smaller picture of it to see if the fibers work, the yarns work, things like that before you go and make the big thing. Um, I believe it's 78 inches, it's like six feet, right? So what I can make is limited to like the six foot length and about 10 inches across. But I'm not hating it. I am so enamored with this weaving process. So I didn't know if you have done anything like that, if you've ever done weaving, if you have one at home, um, please comment below because I might have just stumbled on a whole new playlist. I have to show you. So I included pictures. 
because it comes with a booklet. The booklet's very easy to understand, but literally within about 45 minutes, I had it put together. I'm thinking, well, what, what do I do with the next 30 pages in this instruction booklet? And it's all about learning how to, um, your, your weft and your weave and, you know, like setting up your weft on your loom and the right kind of yarns that you want to use. You're going to do the snap test. Let me just tell you, I have entered into a whole new world, a whole new language, a whole new everything in the last week. It was sort of like Greek to me, or, you know, those, those, the, the peanuts parents where it was like, wah, 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 wah. It was kind of like that in the beginning, but very quickly I got to learn the key terms. So I, um, I got this loom and this is what it looks like here. Now this is a small one. So actually this box that I use works very well. There's a little ledge that sits here at the end. If you can see this, like this little wooden chunk here, so it can sit on a table or in your lap. So basically like this, this case that I have here is absolutely perfect. It doesn't come with a stand. I'm going to tell you that my next purchase is going to be big. I'm going to go like 32 inches, baby. And that way I can make something as small as I want, skinny little scarf, or I can make something all the way up to 32 inches across. I'm limited right now by the width of this um, weave the loom and of course the length, but I can do scarves. I can do placemats. I can do maybe a table runner, different things like that. Just to kind of get the hang of it. So I'm not hating it for $165. Well worth the price. Um, looms aren't like crazy expensive. Um, but they can go up to four or $500, especially if you want to get it with a special table, and things like that. They can be pretty big. Some have wheels so that you can get a little crazy. This isn't your typical crochet hook. Although, as we know, some crochet hooks can be expensive. I've included the pictures below um, in the, just some, some slideshow pictures of putting this thing together. And I can tell you that uh, what I learned. And I will tell you, there's something called the snap test. If you've never done a loom before, never woven before, this is something that I learned that was very important, is that you take the fabric that you want to use for your weft, and your weft is the, the long part, right? It's this part right here. So it's basically the structure, the strength of the fabric that you're making. The weave is what goes across, and that doesn't have to be as strong because it's the, it's the weft, it's the, the um, vertical, that really has the structure of the piece that you're working with. Um, let's see here. So you got your front and your back. This is called your shuttle. And it does exactly what you think it does. It literally shuttles your yarn. I've got it tripped up here. It shuttles your yarn back and forth through uh, your weft. And there's sort of like when you're um, threading a needle, right? There's these little holes in this thing here, this is called your reed, okay? And there's little holes in here. So you put your yarn through, you have two strands per row, basically. One strand goes through the hole, the eye of the needle, and the other one goes in between. So as you move this reed up and down, it shifts the yarn into the different positions. So the yarn kind of does one of these. And what you do is when it goes here, you thread the shuttle through and then it switches and then it kind of gets your weave going. I'm telling you people, this is addicting. So um, my first attempt, I'm going to show you. My first attempt was this. And except for the fact that it's short, um, I couldn't be happier with this. I had these beautiful yarns that I was using um, and they weren't cheap yarns. And it was one of those things where it's like, I want to do something for myself, but I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with them. And I just went through my stash and I found different colors and different yarns. I used a merino wool um, for my weft and I used two different colors. So I alternated the, um, the colors between a light, like a lavender and then a dark purple. Okay, but they were both the same weight. They're both weight of three. I did the snap test, and the snap test is basically you hold the yarn between your fingers about eight inches or so, and then you snap it like that. If it breaks, it's probably not going to be strong enough to be your weft, so you want to make sure that it's nice and strong. 
Um, what I used here, as I said, is a good merino wool. It was a, it was a weight of three. And because of that, um, I just wanted to make sure it would be strong. So I actually took them and I, and I basically created my weft double stranded. So I didn't alternate them. Actually, I double stranded them. So each line of the weft had a lavender and a purple. And then I took three other yarns uh, and then I just created my weave with it and I just alternated it as it it's interesting because it just kind of evolves you know it's like you just start to see the colors and you go oh hold on a second I had this beautiful um, this is actually a, a bamboo natural fiber hand woven so there's really pretty this particular yarn had some really great attributes because it was real thin in some areas and like really thick in the other so I wanted something I could do fun and special with it. And so here and there, I just wove this fabric into it. And I think it just gave us some really good depth. And I'm learning, right? This is my very first attempt. So next time around, maybe I'll have this go halfway across, or you can do like different designs and things like that. Um, it took me, if I was able to sit down uninterrupted, which I really wanted to do, it probably would have taken me four to five hours, I would say, once you get the hang of it, right? Because you got to get it all um, onto your onto your loom and you got to get make sure the tension's right. But once the setup, that takes the longest time. Once it gets set up, then you're just casting back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, and then you have to take it off. And then, of course, you know, with the fringe and things like that. So I'm when I say like five hours, I'm including the setup, the actual weaving, and um, then the twisting of the yarns for the fringe. Um, and then when it was all done, I did go ahead and I blocked this. Um, blocking, because I was using natural fibers, specifically wool, um, I wanted to, and there's, I think there might be some cotton in here, but it's all just kind of rough and natural. Um, I did a hot uh, felting, if you will, but you don't want to agitate it because you don't want the yarns to felt. You just want it to, you want the fibers to kind of open up. So I have something in here that's got a really pretty, like an angora weight in here. And I wanted to, these are the yarns that I used for this particular scarf. These were things that were in my stash that were very special and beautiful that I didn't, I didn't really want to share with anybody. You know, you, there's certain times you go, oh, I want to make something for myself, but I wasn't really sure what to make. So this was a double stranded, mm -hmm. I believe it was called Mardi Gras. So you've got this really pretty kind of a raw, uh, I think it was a silk. And then you've got this really nice, um, uh, like an angora or a mohair. And so you don't, I suppose you could split them if you wanted to, but I wouldn't recommend doing it um, because you can see how the colors, when it was dyed, they were dyed together. So this was a double strand, okay? And you can see it's got a really nice halo with it. So I used some of this, and then I had this in my stash, which is this really beautiful, a raw cotton. And I just fell in love with this yarn and it wasn't cheap. Um, I think I got two skeins of this and there's two colors, this color kind of like a blue. So I incorporated these two together, which I really liked. Um, it didn't give me quite as much definition as I would have liked in hindsight, but I'm not hating it. For my first uh, go round, I'm actually very happy with it. Um, and then I had this yarn which I had had for a long, long time. And this is a, let me pull this little guy out here. This is a universal yarn and this is Bamboo Bloom. Uh, and this is called Rose and it is 40%, 48% rayon made from bamboo, 44% wool and 8% acrylic. Um, so it is nice and wooly. Uh, it's made in Turkey, but it's got this, this is what it looks like. And it's just a beautiful, really interesting yarn. Um, and I was making, I think a cover up or something that I will never wear it, but you see how it's got this, the thick and thin parts. So I thought this would be really interesting to give some really nice texture and depth to the scarf. So this is basically what I had used, um, to make this. And so again, I probably would want a little bit more definition in my colors. I mean, there's a, it's purple. It's just all shades of purple, but I love it. And it does have some depth and some contrast in it as well. 
and some of the um, the yarns are kind of popping through and just giving some really interesting texture. Um, so this took me, like I said, all of about five hours and then I wet blocked it with the hot water and a little bit of mild soap um, and then about an hour later I changed out the water, made it a little bit tepid, but you don't agitate it, right? Because you want to be able to see the structure of the weave. You don't want it to just totally felt together. But by doing a wet blocking, right, not with the agitation, what you end up doing is you get the fibers to open up. And so then they kind of start to seal in together um, and, and give the structure and the strength to your garment. Man, do I love this. But I mean, look at this scarf, right? I mean, we know that as crocheters and knitters, this would have taken a really long time to make. Uh, for you know a couple days at least right so four or five hours I mean you could almost make this for an outfit you're wearing that day as a matter of fact I finished this over Mother's Day weekend and I blocked it yesterday during the day which was Mother's Day and then I wore it out to dinner last night and so um and it's you know again it's a little bit shorter than I like I really want nice big long luxurious scarves but I'm okay with this you know um, I am excited. So have you ever owned a loom before? Um, have you ever tried it? And if you have, like, what's, what's your experience? What is your um, history with it? Because I, you might be seeing a lot more projects of this. This was my very, very, very first attempt. I was all excited and I was going to make this beautiful, um, scarf with this. And very soon into it, I'm just going to show you because I just like to be real here. Very soon into it, I realized, ah, this is not the right. And then I started learning about weft and weave. Then I learned, aha, this is not something that you want for your weft. I could use any number of things, you know, that's good and strong and does that and, and um, uh, passes the snap test, right? Like this part of it does, but this fat part doesn't. And then the fibers kind of get, they kind of get like intertwined and it was not fun to work with. But anyways, so I went ahead and I pulled this off, but this was just a little experiment of what I could do and what this yarn could do. And then I went ahead and I used this as that accent yarn. Um, I am currently, I started this last night and I am making a scarf for the Brit, AKA my husband, the lovely man of my life. He's amazing. Um, and just to show you how amazing he is, he saw how enamored I was excited with and excited I was with this. And his first question to me was, so when are you going to get a bigger loom? He knew, he knows me. He knew that after just spending a couple, you know, hours with this, I was like, Oh my goodness, this is what I'm going to do. Um, but again, I highly, now this is limited because I have never used another product, another type of loom, another company loom. So I'm just giving you my unbiased um, opinion of this one in particular, this Ashford loom. Uh, after I got it, I did some reviews. It's got excellent reviews. I looked around, I read some great ratings about it. Um, it's very sturdy, very well made. It's um, nice sturdy wood. You do have to kind of, you have to oil the wood or use some wax on it or candle wax <clears throat> to kind of condition it so it doesn't splinter, it doesn't dry out um, because this is something that's going to last you for a long time. Uh, they have it in a lot of different sizes. So I think I am going to have to step up my game. I think I'm going to move into a 32 inch. So this is 10. So I'm going to be like three times bigger people. It's going to be very exciting. Um, but the company is out of New Zealand. So for my New Zealand peeps, yay, you have just a beautiful, beautiful product here. Um, oftentimes, historically, this reed, the plastic part here, is actually made out of metal back in the day, right, before plastic was even a thing, because looms have been around for, what, probably thousands of years, um, close to what we were talking about with the history of crocheting and knitting video that I did a little while back. Um, but these are now made out of a nice, hard, solid plastic. So uh, it's a lot easier, a lot sturdier, and you also want to make sure that if you do have a metal one, you don't want it to be rusty or sharp where it could possibly snag um, your yarn or even cut you. So um, this is definitely something we're going to be seeing a lot more of because I'm actually enamored. So I'm making this scarf for my husband, and I'm using this really pretty, it's called Seedlings, 
and it is an organic cotton that I found at a sale, a little boutique that was closing, and it's an expensive yarn. Even though I got it on um, special, it was still a little bit pricey. This is the Verde Collection by Classic Elite Yarns. It's called Seedling. It's 100% organic cotton, um, and I used this for my weft. Okay, so I used it in the white and kind of a cornflower blue, um, and then I just did the stripes. And then um, I'm actually incorporating these two sock weight yarns. This one's got some really pretty blues and yellows and kind of beiges going through it. And then my husband said, I want some color. So I decided to throw this one in, which is also, I would say it's a sock weight. It's a little bit more shimmery, definitely not your natural fiber, but it's really pretty. It's got a little bit of a gleam of a, a sheen to it. And it's got some reds and browns, and, and they're tying in nicely. So it's got some color, but yet it looks masculine as well, because I don't see him wearing this one. Um, but my unbiased opinion of the Ashford Loom so far is 1,000%. I absolutely love it. It was $165. So if you haven't stepped into the world of looming, of weaving and looms, but maybe you want to dabble and stick your toe in it, this would probably be a great place to start. It is... The, the bottom level, and it's not because of the quality. The quality on all of them are excellent. It's really just the size. It's just great for beginners. If you really don't know what you're getting into, then the next one I want to get is probably in the $300 range. And they don't, it's not crazy, but it is an investment. Um, one person that I had spoken to on Facebook said that they have a local weaving guild um, and they have a library of looms. And so before she purchased the loom, she was able to go and like rent one of the looms just to try it out and things like that. So um, that would be an option if you have something like that in your neighborhood. Uh, it definitely uses up a lot of yarn, which the Brit is not unhappy about because as you know, I have a lot of yarn to go through. Um, I'm typically using about four skeins per project. Um, and that's quite a bit each, each, uh, weft area was almost a full skein. And then as you, so it's, it's got quite a bit going on because you're creating a woven fabric. So you've got four or three, depending yarns kind of working interchangeably. Right. And so you don't just have like one or two fibers as you would in crochet or knitting. You've got four. So it's just nice and it's dense. Uh, it can be warm. You can do it nice and, and um, lighter if you want. As I said, I'll probably do some some placemats, some table runners, different things like that. So I just wanted to come to you and say, I did a thing, people. My friends, my lovelies, I did a thing. This is the uh, a scarf I'm working on for the Brit. And as soon as it's done, I'll post a picture of this. Um, but please, I'm interested to know, comment below if you've started weaving. If you have, um, have you tried the Ashford or what brand do you use or what's your experience? Um, this could be the gateway to my deeper obsession. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe knitting was my gateway like eight, nine years ago and then maybe into crochet. Um, and then, you know, we got a knitting machine coming down the pike. So I just wanted to share with you because you've become my friends. And, and this is, this is pretty exciting. So this is my, um, experience and very beginner novice review of the Ashford loom. It's a Reddle loom, uh, rigid loom samplet. This is the samplet. So it's a 10 inch size. All right. I will include links below. There's a lot of great companies out there. Woolery is one who I hadn't found before. Woohoo. Hello, whole new exciting company. And they do a lot of woo, uh, weaving and felting and spinning and a lot more fiber arts and stuff. But of course, you have to do crochet and knits as well. Um, Lion Brand was where I found this one. And you know, I love Lion Brand. You can also find this on Amazon, I found as well. Um, they also have a really good, one more thing is they have very, very good YouTube tutorials on how to put it together and on how to you know, do your weave. And I think I watched one, two videos and I was off and running. I was to the races. And when I did this one here, I actually didn't even have to watch a video. So it's a very, very short learning curve, which is very dangerous because you get off and you just go up and running and you're gone. So 
Thanks so much for watching again. This is Kimberly with Knit for Brains and Crochet for Days and Loopy Loom. I don't know. I'll have to figure this one out. I gotta have a lot of names. Maybe it's just gonna be like Fiber Fun or something like that. Anyways, stay tuned. Comment below. Let me know what you thought. Thanks for liking and subscribing and share my channel. If you know someone that thinks they would enjoy it, then let's all be friends. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.